What's going on today, everybody? Today, I'm gonna be working on this crank. I'm putting stuff together, and we're gonna get moving up forward on this. So we're actually on the downhill slope. We're putting stuff together. We've got um, one more thing coming for this engine, but everything's here that I can get this short block pretty well put together. The one thing that I have coming, though, is the second ring. Second ring on one of the pistons. I have to redo, well, piston four, I made it. I have to redo, I have to re-grind it, I ground down way too much. I went to start it and realized that it's way softer than the top ring. So I was putting the same amount of pressure on it and went and blew right through the second ring. Have it like 30 thousandths of a gap and I need 23 thousandths. So I'm ways off of where I wanted it to be. Tip, if you have manly pistons and you're trying to buy a single set of rings, you can. You cannot buy them from Manly, I tried, uh, but you can purchase them through where you got your pistons. You can call them up and be like, hey, I need just a single set of rings, give them your part number, which was uh, 43995TD-1, I think, off the top of my head, I think that's what it is. I'll show you in a second, but just give them that part number and they'll get in contact with Manly. It's about three weeks out. So it's going to be a bit, but at least it's coming and it'll be here. Uh, Rally Sport Direct, super helpful with all of this stuff. Called them up. They had no problem. They said, yeah, this usually takes a while to do just to give you a heads up. So as long as it's coming, that's totally fine. I thought I was going to have to try to make do with what I had, maybe gap everything else up to 30,000s. But that'll be sweet. It's on the way. Uh, yeah, so we'll get to working on this crank and putting these manly I-beams onto the stock crank with some new king bearings. Yeah, king bearings. So let's get to it. Here's the progress so far. So far, I went through and did the first two pistons or cranks, connecting rods, there we go. Did the first two connecting rods already. Got them in, was figuring out what I needed to torque these down to. And they don't have Luckily, Manly gives you instructions, but they give you instructions for Ford, Chevy, 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 Duramax, Chrysler, Chrysler, and Power Stroke. Nothing that I need. Nothing on the back side. Um, I looked up online, here's the assembly for the cylinder block, and it's saying it wants 52 newton meters or foot pounds we need 38.4 i torqued them all down to 30 or torqued these two down to 30 to try to figure out what i really need to do because these are arp 625s so these are super super hard uh bolts one of the harder ones and i was looking through here and you can see what material the arp 2000s are the the smaller ones are the not as strong ones and then the 625 pluses are the heavier ones and everyone's 50 there's 55 95 85 so i'm probably gonna go with 40 and call manly up and see what they recommend because they don't have anything for subaru on here so stay with their lower end with a lower arp 625, 50 foot-pounds. I think that's what I'm going to have to go with. One thing that I also got in the mail is this tube. And this tube has what's considered plastic agent in it. So I went through and measured everything to make sure that we had the right clearances and made sure that to blueprint things and make sure we have the right material. And you can tell we've got I put some super slick in it, so it's really, really sticky oil, but we do have movement. One thing that I learned is to take this uh, plastic gauge and wipe it off because it will hang up and it, it looks like it's poor uh, bearing seat because the bearing will buckle if it's not in there right. But this is what they're like so this one's got definitely a little bit more clearance than the other one just by how much it falls how fast it falls 
Maybe they're about the same. So we'll get onto these ones. I got a little bit of dirt and stuff on it to clean. So I'll clean that stuff off. And then we'll use this plastic gauge. There's a bunch of different sizes. You've got green, red, and blue are your four, two size, are your three sizes. The green one's the one I'm using. I'm trying to get between uh, 15 thousandths and two thousandths, or 20 thousandths of a gap. So the green one's the one we're using, and it's just got a little, see if we can get in there. You can kind of see the green. This one was put together and it's got a glued section. Well, the plastic gauge is in the glued section, so you have to tear a chunk off, open it up to actually get into the gauge. But you can kind of see it in there. That green thing is your plastic gauge. You put it in between your bearings, <clears throat> put your bearings in, your connecting rods, put them together, tighten them down, torque them down. You lay it across this way. You torque it down, and then you undo it, and you see what your measurement is. So you'll measure how much it's squished, and that will tell you your bearing clearances. And we'll get to that in a second. Here's a quick little bench test. So this is your plastic gauge. So I don't have a lot of red that I'm going to be using, so we'll start off with that. But you can see that it's well below this measurement. So here's some plastic gauge. If we can take something flat and smush it here. Maybe we can get some good smush. Now you can see how this one is a little bit thicker than this one. We can go through and measure what the tolerance is. So it's not going to be, what's that, six thousandths? It's probably about five thousandths because four thousandths is a little bit too big. Five thousandths looks just about right. So that's how you use plastic gauge. You just get your squish and then you just measure it. When you're taking off connecting rod um, these end bolts it's hyper important to not just take one completely out and leave the other one super tight you want to break it break it and just slowly work your way out distributing the uh, tension between the two so you'll just go through and break I already broke these loose but you just work your way back and forth doing little increments at a time until they become fully loose and you can undo it by hand. Then you can take one out and then the other one. But until then, you want to make sure that you're distributing the power between the two. One thing that I'm doing too to make sure that I don't mix up which way the cap goes and which bolt goes to which is put a little mark on the two pieces where they uh, come apart and then put a little mark in the top part of the bolt. That way I know that that bolt goes with that side and these two sides to go together. So you can't be mixing these up and switching them around between the two or between connecting rods because they're made specifically for this rod in this orientation. Got the bolts out. Now they're sleeved, so they're really, really hard to get out. I can't just pull them apart. So I'll take it over to the bench and kind of wiggle it out. There we got, go. We got the two pieces apart and you can see the sleeves stick into this side and it makes it really hard to pull apart. 
And now that I've made this mark, I know I need to put it together like this and put the two marks together because you can put it like this, but that'll be the wrong way because it's bored and drilled this for this way. So everything needs to go back that way. Now that it's all out, these come pre um, from the factory with lube in here that you need to get out. So we'll go get some isopropyl alcohol and clean these journals out and make sure that everything's nice and clean before you put this back together. Because if you have dirt or grit or anything on these side, on the flat sides right here, that will increase your diameter and not allow everything to seat properly. So make sure you clean everything real nice. So there you can see the dirt that's on brand new parts. That's all the oil that needs to come off. Now this is a lint free rag, but it still will leave behind a little bit of uh, fuzz. So we need to make sure to get all that stuff out too. Now that we got the connecting rod all cleaned up, we need to clean the bearings too. So we don't want these bearings to be moving at all inside this connecting rod. We want the bearing to move on the crankshaft. So the two mating surfaces between the connecting rods and the bearings have to be completely clean and dry and they will stay that way. Now that we've cleaned those off, I want to hit them with a little bit of air to get any of the fuzz that's on it off. Setting bearings is real easy. There's a little tab on one side and a little tab placement on the other. Those two go together. I put the tab in to make sure that it's in there right and they just push the middle down and they're in there. Sometimes you can have it where the bearing's sliding out of one side more than the other and you just push down on the high side and they'll push the other side down or into the right place. Now these bearings actually have a stick up or a crush um, portion that actually sticks up higher than this outside casting. It's supposed to be two thousandths, two thousandths of an inch that it sticks up. So this sticks up higher. So when it smushes together, it pushes out on this brace harder. Now if you go too high, it will buckle the bearing and it will cause a high spot. And you don't want that. You want it to have a nice even load distribution across this whole area. So there you can see the plasti gauge in the bearing. I'm gonna put it in there dry the first time. No oil, no nothing on it. And check the clearances. Your oil will add a super small amount of clearance that, to it too, but Generally, you want it to go all the way across your bearing. This is close enough. It'll work. I'm just trying to get a general sense on how thick the, or how close the bearing is to each other. So we'll put this on, make sure that our two li lines match up with each other, and we'll go from there. Now let's set these to, I'm setting them to 40 foot pounds. I'm doing equal steps. So I'm actually doing four steps. So I'm doing 10, 20, 30, and then 40. So you start off with your 10, you work it together. We gotta close this gap first. So we'll slowly close the gap, going back and forth, doing like quarter turns at a time. And then we'll set each of our tolerances. So if you don't know how to set a torque wrench, there's numbers that go around and this twists. So you wanna match up this zero with 
10. You probably can't see that at all. But that means it's 10. Um, I'm on foot pound side, or you can see that there's another side or foot pound. So we'll make sure that we're doing 10, make sure that it's going on and just slowly work our way in with the bearing. There, so a couple things with the torque wrench. <clears throat> you hear it click, it's very important to stop after that click. You can keep going past the click if, if you wanted to, but that click is just there to let you know that, hey, that's where it's at, now stop. So you kinda gotta let it go or be pretty close to where you, how much you need to put onto it. So you go and it'll click and you can keep going past it. So you don't want to do that. You want to just click it and stop. Another thing is you don't want to be pushing it super hard. You want to have a nice gentle click till it clicks. When you're pushing it really hard, it will go past it a lot easier than um, just a nice gentle movement. You saw me switch. I was having troubles with the part coming up on this side. And I couldn't keep it down. So you're always able to switch if you need to, to hold things down. Another thing is I went through and did each side three times clicking it. And that just makes sure that everything was like kind of jimmied in there and nice and set where I needed it to be. So now we'll take this off and we can measure our clearances. So since this has the sleeves in it, there's no way for me to pull this off of here. So what do you have to do is I just grabbed a rubber mallet and gave it a couple good whacks on each side. Now you can feel that it's loose. And then we can come through and remove it. <clears throat> so the reason I didn't put the plastic gauge on this side was because I hit it. I hit it this way and that could give me a false reading if I miss and hit this. That adds pressure and pushes onto the plastic gauge giving me a false reading. I forgot to think about where this uh, plastic gauge is going to be. So now it's going to be in the middle of these weights and it's going to be really hard for me to measure. Hopefully I have, that doesn't have a piece, hopefully I'll have a piece that has actually a measurement that I can do. So we'll pull this off and you can see the plastic gauge right there. So the thicker that this is, the more, the less, excuse me, the thicker this is, the less gap that you have, the more it's squished out. I should also mention that this stuff is supposed to be at a certain um, temperature range, and it's probably below that right now. So we can take this and see that our, we're at about 25 thousands oh I should measure in inches always remember which side you're measuring in so we're about one thousandths of an inch
Now that that's done, I'm gonna take some isopropyl and clean this stuff out. I was having troubles with this connecting rod where when this matched up with the imprint on the journal or the bearing side, it would catch. And I thought I had a problem with it. So I took it out and fixed that problem and found out that it was because this plastic gauge was still in there. Now this is oil soluble plastic gauge, so it will get dissolved in the oil, which is no big deal, but having the two intercept each other becomes a problem. Another thing about this plastic gauge is you're looking for a nice uniform pattern. You don't want it to be um, like high, low, high, low, because that means you have undistributed pa uh, pressure against all of it. So this one has a nice uniform pattern going across the whole bearing. <clears throat> For this final assembly, I'm going to be adding Permatex Ultra Slick oil, really, really sticky oil to help keep things in there. So that oil will stay in between those for a long time, but I'll have it that in there. And then I also have ARP or Manley's um, lube to put on the bolts. So it's got some on it, but I'm going to just put a little bit more to be safe. And that way, when I do my final torque down, everything should be good to go. This stuff stays on your hands for a long time, so I'm just going to use a glove to get the majority of it stuck in there. Got that in there. Just give it a good nice... Make sure not to get it on this top side. It's okay to get it on the outsides, but don't be getting it on the top. Sticky, sticky stuff. Now we'll torque everything down. Make sure to check your torque wrench to make sure that it's on the right setting. We'll go down to 10. When you're done, always check to see if you have a nice flow free flowing bearing. Nothing's real loose. It's got some side to side movement. That's good. But it falls at about the same rate as everything else. So we're in business. We'll get number four done and uh, check back in. Cool. Now that that's done, let's put it in here. But first, we got to clean it.
So here it is. There's all my crush washer or crushed uh, plasti gauge. It's working out pretty good. There's a spot that's right there that's not um, touched because the bearings actually have a journal in them. You can see that journal. Um, you can see it probably better right here. So this journal is causing it to not crush right there. But everything has decent Of course it won't focus on anything. Everything's got decent crush on these. So I just went through and measured all of these. Everything's at one thousandth gap. Right here, right here, right here. This this one has is fifteen thousandths. Fifteen ten thousandths? Um but it was in there sideways. This side has a little bit where this side's not press as much as this side. So I'm worried about that a little bit, but maybe it's just not in there right or in there um, flat. So everything's looking good. We got about a thousandth of clearance with everything. So I'm happy. Cool, well that's gonna do it for us today. We got pretty good results with everything. Now we've got to open up the seals, put the seals in it, put some gasket on it and put some assembly lube on everything so it's finalized and we'll have this short block well on its way still waiting for that ring to come in so i can finish putting the pistons on it so i can finish putting the pistons on it but that's still three weeks out and we're gonna save the rest of it for tomorrow it's getting pretty late out here so we'll we'll just assemble it tomorrow we'll deal with that stuff anyways be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Take your easy, guys. Peace. Always remember to set your torque wrenches back to zero when you're done using them for the